Hey seniors, my name is Cynthia, the College Advisor for Tennyson for the Holy Names Upper Ground Project. So for today's video, we're going to be going over FAFSA and I will be walking you step by step through the whole application. So before we get started, I did want to provide a checklist for you all. So these are some items that you should have before we begin to complete the FAFSA just to make it flow a lot smoother and so it's not so chaotic having to run around and find all this information. So before starting the FAFSA, you should have your social security number as well as your parents' social security number. If you're not a U.S. citizen, you should also have your alien registration number. And you should also have your parents and yours, if you did work in 2019, your federal income tax return, W-2s, and any other record of money earned. So you will also be needing, if applicable, bank statements and records of investments if you or your parents did actually have investments as well as records of untaxed income. Again, if applicable, if you or your parents had any untaxed income, you are going to need record of that. And lastly, you will be needing an FSA ID. So every student is required to have an FSA ID or else you will not be able to log on to the FAFSA application. And parents, if they do have a social security number, they will also be required to have an FSA ID so that they can sign electronically at the end of the application. However, if your parents do not have a social security number, do not worry, there are other options to signing the FAFSA. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you have not already created an FSA ID, this is what you're going to be doing. So you can easily just Google create FSA ID and you will hit the first option on Google, which will take you to this page. So you're going to go ahead and create a username and password and make sure that your password fulfills these couple requirements that are on the screen. Once you do that, go ahead and select continue. You will then be asked for more information. So you will be asked for your first name, middle initial if you have one, last name, your birthday, and your social security number. So make sure that the name that you provide is the same exact name and spelling as it is on your social security card. So once you do that, you go ahead and select continue. Then you will be asked for more information such as your email, your phone number, as well as your mailing address and your language of preference. And at the moment, the only options are English or Spanish. And once you do that, you go ahead and select continue. You will be then prompted to select and answer for challenge questions. So these questions are there in case you ever forget your password just to verify your identity. So once you select those questions and provide the answers, you will go ahead and select continue. And the next page that it takes you to is the confirmation page. So you want to just look through this whole page and verify that all the information that you provided is correct. So this is the second part of the page. And once you looked everything over and everything looks correct, you will go ahead and select that little checkbox at the bottom that says you certify that all the information you provided is correct and you agree to the terms and conditions. So once you do that, go ahead and hit continue. And this is where you will be asked to verify the phone number and email that you provided. So you will be sent a code through text and that code you will insert and hit verify. Next, you'll be sent a code through email. So again, you're going to insert that code in the box and hit verify. And once you do that, then you should have a screen that is green, which means that you officially have an FSA ID. So once you completed the FSA ID, you will be going on to the web page that says complete the FAFSA form. So if you have not logged on and started the FAFSA process at all, you will go ahead and select start here. If you have already logged on to this uh, page and already started the application, even if it was answering just one question, you will go ahead and select log in under returning user. So then you will be prompted to select either I am the student or I am the parent preparer. So it should be the students. Um, who is applying for FAFSA, it just makes it a lot easier. So once you make that selection, go ahead and select next. You will then be asked to log in with your FSA ID and password that you have created. Go ahead and select next. And then you will go ahead and agree to their disclaimer. And once you do that, you will be asked what school year 
for FAFSA you will be applying for. So a lot of students make the mistake of selecting 2020-2021, which is the current year. However, the FAFSA is for next year. So next year will be the 2021-2022 school year. So make sure to select the correct year. And once you do that, you will be prompted to the next page where you have to create a save key, which is pretty much um, a pin. So it can either be letters, it can be words, it can be symbols, something that you will remember because you will be asked for the save key every time that you log on to your FAFSA. And next, it shows a couple common questions that students have. So if you're curious about any questions, you can just go ahead and select it and an answer will pop up right below it. However, you don't need to do anything on this page. So you can go ahead and hit next. So once you do that, you'll see your student information. So your name, your birthday, your social security number already pre-filled. And that is because you already provided that information when you created your FSA ID. So it just transferred over. So just make sure that all of that is correct as well as your email address and your phone number. So again, hit next and more pre-filled information. So verify that your address is correct and hit next. So for the next section, which is the student residency and eligibility, you will select yes or no if you've lived in California for at least five years. If you select no, it will ask what your state of legal residence is and you would go ahead and select that as well as if you became a legal resident of California before July 1st of 2016, and you would go ahead and select yes or no. And then if you select yes or no, you are still gonna have to answer if you are a US citizen. So you would put yes, no, uh, but you're an eligible non-citizen, which means that you are still able to fill out the FAFSA. However, if you uh, select no I'm not a citizen or eligible non-citizen that means that you are not able to fill out the FAFSA and you might be able to fill out the California Dream Act application so go ahead and make your selection and hit next you then will insert your student information so first you will select high school diploma next you will select first bachelor's degree and then it asks, will you have your first bachelor's degree before next school year? No, because it will be your first bachelor's degree that you're going for. What will your college grade level be when you begin next school year? It will be never attended college first year. Even if you're taking in concurrent enrollment classes, it's still going to be never attended college. And then it will ask if you're interested in being considered for a work study. I definitely recommend you select yes. And later on, you will be notified if you do qualify for work study or if you don't, but it doesn't hurt to say yes. Even if you are given work study, it does not mean that you have to use it. Go ahead and hit next after all of those choices. It will then ask if you are a male or female. The reason for this is because as a male, uh, between the ages of 18 and 25, you are required to register for selective service. If not, you will not be able to receive financial aid. So go ahead and make your selection and then hit next. If you do have a driver's license number, go ahead and insert that here, as well as the state where your license is from, which should be California. However, if you don't have a license, you do not have to fill this out, go ahead and hit next. You will then be asked if you're a foster youth or if at any time you were in the foster care system. You go ahead and make your selection as well as selecting the highest school completed by both parent one and two. Keep in mind that FAFSA will be asking for parent one and parent two. Even if you um, have a legal guardian, the questions that they ask do not pertain to your legal guardian. They pertain to your parents. So even if you are not aware of your parents' highest level of education, you can go ahead and just put other or unknown. Or if you do, you go ahead and select what level they did complete. Moving on to school selection, you will be putting the name of your high school as well as the city your high school is located and the state in order to search for the school. Once you listed those three things, go ahead and confirm. As you can see, 
the first option is Tennyson High School. So you would go ahead and select your school and hit next. Here's where you will be selecting all the schools that you are going to be applying to. So you're able to select up to 10 schools that you're applying to. So if you are applying to more than 10 schools, I recommend just putting your top 10. You can always come back to the application and make changes, add schools, take schools off at a later time. Moving on to search schools is you select the state and city to make it easier. So for example, if I want to add Davis, I'm going to put California, city, Davis. I don't need to put the school name because that is the only one. So I go ahead and select it and hit add more schools. Let's say I want to do Riverside. Go ahead and type out Riverside, search, and a couple different ones come up. So make sure you are paying attention and you select University of California, Riverside, if that is what you are hoping to apply for. And if you are done, you go ahead and select next. And here we'll give you a summary of the schools that you selected. And then you will have to select your housing plan. So if I were to choose Davis, I would want to live on campus. If I was going to Riverside, maybe I want to live off campus. So I go ahead and select that and hit next. So the next section is dependency status. So you will be asked what your marital status is. Should all be single. Go ahead and select next. So the section wants more student information to determine dependency. So do you now have or will you have children who will receive more than half the, of their support from you between these dates? Make your selection. Do you have dependents who live with you and who receive more than half of their support from you now and through that date? Go ahead and make your selection and hit next. Answer the following questions to determine if you are required to provide information about your parents on your FAFSA. So you go ahead and read all of these and check all that apply. So the first two, most of you will not have to check these off. However, these three, make sure to read these. So for this third one, it asks at any time since you turned age 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care or were you a dependent or ward of the courts? Next one is, as determined by a court in your state of legal residence, are you or were you an emancipated minor? So if you don't know what an emancipated minor is, it pretty much means that the court determined that you are legally an adult and you do not depend on a parent or a guardian. Last question is, does someone other than your parent or step-parent have legal guardianship of you as determined by a court in your state of legal residence? Or if none apply, go ahead and select none of the above and hit next. And just a quick reminder, whenever there is a question that says you or your, it is pertaining to you, the student. I know some of these questions like are you a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces might seem silly to you. However, not everyone applies for FAFSA straight out of high school. Some of them are already adults when they are applying for FAFSA. So just keep that in mind that whenever they use the terms you and your and it is not in parent demographics or parent financials, they are referring to you. So are you the student, a veteran of the United States? States armed forces. So keep that in mind whenever you read these questions. Next question, on or after July 1st, 2020, were you homeless or were you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? Self-supporting means that no one was providing for you, you were providing for yourself. And if you have any questions about any questions asked on this application, there's always going to be these little question marks on the side which el that elaborate the question that is being asked. So for example, if you go ahead and select the question mark, it takes you to another page that gives you a better definition of what it is. So homeless means lack fixed, regular, and adequate housing. So for example, if you were living in a hotel, if you were living in your car, if you were 
uh, couch surfing at different family members' house, different friends' house, then you would be considered um, homeless if it was on or after this date. Once you make your selection, go ahead and hit next. So after you answered those questions, you will either be told that you are considered a dependent student or you are considered an independent student. If you are considered a dependent student, it means you must provide parent information. If you are considered an independent student, you do not need to provide parent information. So because I was considered a dependent student, you have the option of selecting that you will provide information about your parents or if you are completely un unable to provide information about your parents, you would go ahead and select this and go ahead and hit next. So now we are moving on to the parent demographic. So keep in mind that there is a switch now. It is no longer asking about you. It is now asking about your parents. You will be prompted to select what your parents' marital status is. So you have a couple options. You can select never married and you will be asked which parents' information will be provided. Either mom or dad. Only one. If you select unmarried and both legal parents living together, so your parents are not married, but they are both living together, you just go ahead and hit next. If your parents are married or if they remarried, so if you have a step parents, then you will be prompted to select the month and year that they were married or remarried. If your parents were divorced or separated, you will go ahead and list the month and year that your parents were divorced or separated, as well as which parents' information you will provide. Again, only one. Lastly, if you select widowed, you will also be prompted to select the month and year that your parent became widowed, along with which parents' information you will be providing. And once you have made your selections and filled in the additional information, go ahead and select next. Once you're prompted to insert your parents' information, keep in mind that if you are putting information for two parents, make sure that you keep them consistent. So make sure that if you're going to be using mom as first parent or parent one, you always have mom as parent one or first parent and dad as parent two or second parent if you are using both parents information. If one or both of your parents does not have a social security number, you will go ahead and just select all zeros and then list down their last name, first name, their date of birth, as well as their email address. And sometimes when you select next, it will say error and it will not accept the zeros, but just keep clicking next and it will eventually go through to the next page. You will then be asked if your parents have lived in California for at least five years. You will either select yes. If you select no, it will ask what is your parents' state of legal residence. So keep in mind that you're considered a legal resident of a certain state if you live there or if you spent more than 184 days out of the year in that state. In the parent household information, they want to know what your household size is. So it already has the number of parents that you had listed, either one or two, and it already includes yourself. So only include other children, even if they don't live with your parents, but they are providing more than half of their support or will be providing half of their support from July 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022. Or if those other children can answer no to every dependency question on the FAFSA and if you need a reminder you can go ahead and select the link and it'll show you the list of questions. So other than kids it also asks if there is any other people who live with your parents, if your parents provide more than half of their support and if your parents will continue to provide more than half of their support between those dates go ahead and select a number or if there isn't any go ahead and just select zero and then it will add up the number so for example, if it is just your parents and you, no other children, no other people living in your home, then it will just be three. If you have another sibling, you put one and it'll add it up to four by itself. And then it will ask the number of college, how many people in your parents' household 
will be college students between those dates, not including your parents. So keep in mind that you are going to be a college student between those dates. So go ahead and select one if it is only you who is going to be in college. So here comes the fun part, taxes. So they want to know about your parents' finances. So for 2019, have your parents completed their IRS income tax return or another tax return? So you will go ahead and select already completed if they already have their 2019 tax return. So keep in mind it is 2019. If they have not but they are planning to file, then you will select will file or if they are not going to file, you select not going to file. If you select already completed, it will ask what type of income tax return they received. So for most of you, it will be the IRS 1040. And for 2019, what is your parents' tax filing status according to their tax return? So it will either be single, head of household, married, filed, joint return, married, filed, separate, qualifying, widow, widower, or you do not know. So go ahead and ask your parents and they will definitely know. So for some of you, this IRS data retrieval tool will pop up. For some of you, it will say that your parents are not eligible to transfer their information, but for a lot of you, it will say that your parents are eligible to transfer their information. So it will give you the option to do so. If you want, you can. However, sometimes it does not work. So it is completely up to you. If you want to test it out and see if it works, um, you can go ahead and do that. And even if it doesn't work, you can always go back and edit the correct information. So you'll be asked what your parents' adjusted gross income for 2019 was, and it provides the line number to make it easier for you. So whatever number is in line 8B, that is a number that you will be putting here. It will then ask how much parent one made from working wages, salaries, tips, etc. in 2019, and that amount can be found by adding line one plus schedule one lines three plus six plus box 14 of schedule K1 or form also known as form 1065 and the same thing for parent two. So some of your parents might have filed a schedule one, some of them might not have. So if you know, go ahead and select yes. If you know that they did not, go ahead and select no. If you're not sure, feel free to put I do not know. And then it will ask as of today, is either of your parents a dislocated worker, which means that they are unemployed. If you select yes, it will let you go ahead and just go to the next section. However, if you select no or you do not know, it will ask you to check all that apply. So in 2019 or 2020, did you, your parents, or anyone in your parents' household receive benefits from any of the federal benefits programs listed below? So this is something that you might want to ask your parents if you or anyone in your household received benefits from Medicaid, Supplemental Security Income, Supplemental Nutrition Assistant Program, Free or Reduced School Lunch, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, special supplemental nutrition program for women, infants, and children, or none of the above if none of them apply. Once you select that, go ahead and select next. So some of you will be given the option to skip the remaining questions. If you do decide to skip, it will not affect uh, the aid, the federal aid that you receive. However, some specific colleges are looking for specific answers to the following questions. So I honestly suggest you select yes, even if a lot of the questions that you are going to answer are going to be zeros. Just to be safe, I would say select yes. Some of you might not even get this option. So enter the amount of your parents' income tax for 2019. This is the total amount of IRS Form 1040, Line 4, minus Schedule 2, Line 2. So go ahead and put that amount and hit next. So a lot of these questions already have a zero in them because most people answer zero to these questions, but just go through these questions and verify that your answer is zero. 
For the first one, it talks about combat pay. So if your parents were not in the military at all, that's definitely going to be a no. Student college grant scholarship aid reported to the IRS in your parents' income. So if they didn't receive any AmeriCorps benefits, this is going to be zero. If they didn't receive any education credits, this will be zero. Any untaxed portion of IRA distribution and pension. So if they do not have any pension or untaxed portion, it's going to be zero. If they had any IRA deductions and payments to self-employed, so if they were self-employed. Next couple questions, again, already have a zero pre-filled because most people answer zero. However, you want to make sure that your answer is actually zero. If it is not, go ahead and change that answer. So first one is child support your parents paid because of divorce or separation as a result of legal requirement. Go ahead and put that number, if any. Earnings from work under a cooperative education program offered by a college. And last one, taxable earnings from need-based employment programs such as federal work study and need-based employment portions of fellowships and assistantships. More questions with zero was pre-filled. Next, some of you will be asked if you want to skip questions about your parents' assets. Go ahead and just select no. It will ask as of today, what is your parents' total current balance of cash savings and checking accounts? So go ahead and ask your parents what those are. Add it up, list it there. As of today, what is the net worth of your parents' investments, including real estate, but do not include your parents' home if they own it? So do your parents have any investments? If so, what is the worth of those investments? If they do not, go ahead and select zero. Next question, as of today, what is the net worth of your parents' current businesses and or investment farms? So again, do not include a family farm or family business with 100 or less full-time or full-time equivalent employees and go ahead and select next so now it's a switch to student financials as you, you can see here it is no longer asking about your parents finances now they want to know about your finances so for 2019 have you completed your IRS tax return so if you did not work at all in 2019 or if you made very very little you probably didn't file so you're gonna go ahead and put not going to file if you were plan if you are planning on to but you haven't already go ahead and select will file if you already completed go ahead and select already completed so because most of you did not work in 2019 or did not make enough to file i will go ahead and select not going to file but if you do select already completed it's going to ask similar questions to what it asked for the parents financial section it then asks how much you earned from working Wages, salaries, tips in 2019. Go ahead and put that amount, if any, and hit next. So this section asks if you paid any child support, if you had any earnings from the cooperative education program, or if you had any taxable earnings from need-based employment programs. So same questions that they ask for parent financials. And again, it's very, very likely that you're going to select zero for all of them and go ahead and select next. And the same questions that were asked for parents. Make sure to read over them one more time. However, for most of you, it will be zero. And go ahead and select next. I will go ahead and just skip these questions because you already saw what those questions were and it's likely that you didn't have any assets. So as you can see right here, I'm getting an error box saying that I put all zeros for a social security number. So it's telling me to check for errors however i'm just going to keep selecting check for errors you see and it took two times and it went through next it will ask if you're a preparer so if this is your fafsa or if your parent is helping you or a college advisor counselor you're going to select no unless you actually hired and you're paying someone to fill this out you're going to select yes but most of you should be no go ahead and select next so on this page, it gives you a summary of all the information that you provided. So make sure to just scroll all the way down, read everything through, make sure everything is 100% correct. Once everything is correct, go ahead and hit next. Once you do that, then the screen that you'll be seeing is the page for you and a parent to sign the form. So first, you will go ahead and select sign FAFSA for the student 
and then you will go ahead and agree and hit next. Once you do that, the page for student signature will pop up, which will include your information as well as the button that says sign FAFSA. And once you do that, you can go ahead and hit next. And this is a screen that will show up. So on the left side where it says student signature, it will already say that it has been signed electronically. And the next step will be for the parent to sign. So if your parent has an FSA ID, then once you select provide parent signature, all your parent has to do is log on using their FSA ID and password, and they will automatically have the form signed just like the student signed just by clicking a couple buttons. However, I will be showing you an example if your parent does not have a social security number and therefore was not able to create a FSA ID, you will still go ahead and select provide parent signature. And this page will pop up and you're going to wanna to select print a signature page. And once you have that selected, you go ahead and hit next. And on here, so the left side will be completed with the student signature and then the parent signature. You will have to hit print signature page. And once you do that, a page will pop up with the student's information and towards the bottom, it will have um, step one, step two, step three. And in step three, it will have an address for you to send that paper. So once you have it filled out and your parent signs it and puts a date on it, then you will go ahead and mail it to the address that is on that sheet. And before you do mail it, I definitely suggest making a copy of it for your record to verify that a parent did sign it and it was sent. Um, ideally, if you could get a tracking number so you can track um, the signature page to make sure that it actually gets to, you know, the FAFSA offices, that would be ideal. So that would be the next step if your parent does not have an FSA ID and you have to um, print out a signature page. And once you print out the page, then this page will pop up, which says congratulations, your name, as well as some information, some personal information, your email. And if you scroll down on that confirmation page, it will have your EFC. So if you didn't know, the EFC is the expected family contribution. So it will say EFC equals, and then that number is a number that you should expect for your family to contribute approximately. Again, it really depends. Um, the number that they provide doesn't mean that that is the exact amount that you're going to have to be paying out of pocket. There are a lot of different factors that come into play with how much you're actually going to be spending. But as you can see, this student here has an EFC of zero, so it's expected that they will not have to be paying anything out of pocket. However, that might mean that they are going to be offered loans. So even if you have an EFC of zero, that also includes loans uh, for some. So just keep an eye out on that. And don't be discouraged if you have a high EFC number. Again, because it depends the school that you go to. Of course, we know that UCs are more expensive than CSUs and community college. So, you know, continue with your applications. Don't be scared of the EFC. You won't know exactly how much you're going to pay until you know, you receive your financial aid package from the schools that you have been accepted to. So you can just go ahead and scroll down and it'll have a couple stats of the schools that you selected for your FAFSA to be sent to. So for example, there's Davis and it tells you the percentage, uh, the graduation rate, the retention rate, and the transfer rate. So once you have done that, you should be getting a email confirmation that you did submit the FAFSA. However, if you want a double confirmation or printed confirmation on the same sheet, if you go back and scroll up, there is a print this page uh, button. So you can go ahead and select that and you can print it out or just save it as a PDF for your records. But again, you should be receiving an email with this confirmation. And once you do receive an email confirmation, or you can just screenshot this page as well, make sure to email it to your advisor so that we have record that you did in fact apply for FAFSA. Lastly, I did want to mention for some of you, if your parents have not filled out their taxes and you did select that they were going to file, you can come back after about three to five days you can log back into the FAFSA and edit any information. 
and that goes for schools as well. If you change your mind on a couple schools and you want to make sure that those schools get your FAFSA, then you can go ahead and go back and edit those schools. However, keep in mind um, that if you are applying to a lot of CSUs, you only need to really send it to one CSU because all CSUs share information. So as long as you send it to one CSU, all the CSUs that you apply to will be receiving it as well. Congratulations, you have officially applied for FAFSA for financial aid. You can check this off of your list. Go ahead and treat yourself, take a breather, relax. And again, if you need any assistance, your advisors are here to help you and have a great day.